Praise all praises, all praises. Shalom, Most High in Christ, bless. I'm Captain Noah, and we are Israel United in Christ. We are here to teach the truth according to the Bible. That's right. The truth according to the Bible. Not like your pastors at Word Tabernacles. Not like your, power, your pastors at Showers of Blessing. We are here to give you the unadulterated truth according to the Bible. That's right. We're going to get that in Psalm chapter 119. So we're going to go through the Bible precept upon precept to make sure that you understand what's being brought out. Hey, sister, could you come around this way? Let me know when you got it, bro. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. So the Bible says that the righteousness of God is an everlasting righteousness. Meaning that the Most High's righteousness is never going to depart. As long as we have a sun, a moon, and the stars, the Most High's righteousness is not going to depart. Read it again. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So when we say that we come to teach the truth, that means that we're coming to teach God's laws. Something different, something new, something that you have never seen done before, right? All of the laws in the Christian church are done away with. There's no laws that you have to keep in those, uh, what they call the congregation of the dead. Read that one more time. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. So what is righteousness? Do you have any idea what the Lord's righteousness is, sis? Do you know what righteousness is? Keep the faith and trust in the Lord with all your heart. She says, keep the faith and trust in the Lord with all of your heart. So now we're going to give you a definitive answer of what righteousness is so that you don't have to lean to your own understanding. We're going to show you what the Bible says that righteousness is. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, 6 and 25. Bring it up. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 25. Yeah. And it shall be our righteousness. So the Bible says it shall be our righteousness. Remember that word, our righteousness. If we observe to do all these commandments, it says if we observe what on what holiday just passed by that the world is observing? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So when you when you look at the word observe, that means there's going to be a time set for it. You're going to prepare yourself for it. You're going to go and buy certain items for it. There, it's marked on the calendar. That's what it means to observe, right? But we're talking about God's laws. It says if we observe and and what? If we observe to do to what? To do. So the same way that the world has kept Thanksgiving, more we should be keeping God's laws, meaning observing them and doing them. That's right, right. Right. To do all these commandments. Some of the commandments. All these commandments. Did you know that ties is a commandment? Ties is a commandment, right? But it's not the ties that you think about in the church. But they keep that. Right? They twist the scriptures and tell you that you have to tie, right? But what about the other laws? Right. What about the Sabbaths? What about all of the high holidays? you know anything about those? Have your pastor told you about those? Yeah. They have? Okay, so we're going to find out. Read. To do all these commandments before the Lord our God. All right, so there's a group of, um, let's say, different categories of laws that we have to coming to the understanding of, right? The five categories of laws, and I'm pretty sure that they do not teach these in your Christian church, all right? So the, the five types of laws, the first law is the ceremonial law, right? The ceremonial law deals with the high holy days and as well as today. So she says to, to her every day is a day of Thanksgiving, all right, but it's something particular about today, something very particular about today, and this is going into the ceremonial law, all right? I, I just want you to... Um, I, I leave it open for you to guess a little bit more. And do you know anything about today that you've been taught out of your Christian church that makes today special? Okay, all right, so we're going to help you. Like okay. we said, we're going precept upon precept. Get that in Isaiah real quick, and then we're going to come back. We're going to show you what is special about today and how you observe today. All right? Read the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 10. For precept must, verse 9, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? So the question is, who would the Lord make to understand doctrine and who would he give this knowledge to, right? There's a criteria 
for you to get that. That's why it's the question. Read it again. Watch this. Whom shall he teach knowledge? So the question is, who will God teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And who is he going to make to understand the doctrine of this Bible? Watch this. Them that are weaned from the milk. It says them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. And drawn from the breast. The analogy is us coming into the Lord as a child, right? Children, you, you tell the child that those leaves are yellow and they'll believe that those leaves are yellow, right? But we know that those leaves are brown. But as a child, they, they accept the things that are told to them, right? So the Most High God says we have to come to him like a child, the mindset of a child. We have to be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. But listen, check this out. Verse 10, for precept must be upon precept. So the Bible says precept must be upon precept. This is how you get the understanding of what's in the Bible. Now, your pastors have never read the scriptures precept upon precept, and we're going to help you understand what a precept is. Well, let us finish the scripture first. Read it from the top for precept. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. All right, so what is a precept? Uh, anybody got their, their smartphone? I want you to look up precept for the sister so she has a better understanding of what a precept is. The word precept, definition. A general rule intended to regulate behavior or thought. So the Bible says that these general rules must be stacked upon each other. And what they do, they help, uh, they help uh, regulate behavior or thought. So the Bible is to regulate your behavior or your thought. Right, right. That's, that's where we get the word religios, which we uh, interpret today as religion. But it means simply to restrict or to bind. All right? So precept or law. Law upon law. Right? Uh, what we're looking for. Yeah, so we're going to go back today and show you what's special about today. All right? Re read. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Bring it out. Remember the Sabbath day. So the Bible says, remember the Sabbath day. Have you remembered the Sabbath day? So what day is the Sabbath? Christ day. Cool. We, we, we teach different. Well, we only use the King James Bible because this is the... This Bible has been authorized by King James. Did you know that King James was the last black man to rule Scotland and over England? This book was authorized by a black man. King James was not a white boy. Right, so you're going to find out a lot today. So read that again. Pay close attention. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So we're out here today to bring you into remembrance on how to keep the Sabbath day holy. Watch this. Verse 9. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So six days. How many days is it, is it in a week? With the seven days, seven. seven days are in a week. So the Bible said six days shall you do all your labor and your work. Read. Verse 10. But the seventh day. But what day? But the seventh day. Is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So it says the seventh day of the week is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. So what day of the week is the seventh day? Sunday. Sunday is the seventh day. Y'all agree with that? No, sir. All right, so on your phone, what I want you to do is pull up your calendar. I want you to see what the first day of the week is. What day comes before Monday? Sunday. Sunday. Right. So on your calendar, Sunday appears as the first day of the week. All right? So if you count from Sunday, if you count six more days, what day do you land on? The seventh day, which is what? Sunday. No. No, look, help I'm, her out. I'm sorry. So Saturday is Monday. Saturday. <laughs> Saturday. So from Sunday, you want to count six more days. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So watch this. Listen to this. Verse 9. Excuse me. Exodus chapter 20, verse 9. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So you got six days to do your work and all your labor. But the seventh day... The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Right. So the Bible says that the seventh day, which is Saturday, 
It's the Sabbath of the Lord your God. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.